Okay, we continue our public ministry, your soul winning. Proverbs 11, verse 30. Yeah. Verse that highlights everything about soul winning or the public ministry. And today we're going to look at a subject, women and a soul winner. Can women do soul winning? And we'll look at scripture with that, but the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. He that winneth souls is wise. So can a woman be wise to witness? Can she take part of the fruit of being a Christian witness? And Mark 16. Gospel Mark chapter 16. Mark 16. Verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye in all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Them. And then say unto him, his men, go unto them, and preach. Now that's where we get trouble. Because then we get the Bible that says, women are not to preach. And we're going to look into this. But if we were to take the other cross reference of Matthew, don't have this one written down. The last chapter of Matthew, Matthew, I don't have this one written down. Matthew twenty eight, eighteen. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So we got teaching and we got preaching. Now, as far as baptizing, that is a pastor of a church that's not an evangelist. It's not a missionary unless he has established a church without a pastor. So as far as baptizing, women are not to do that. But as far as the commission to go in all the world and preach the gospel, it also says to teach the gospel. Now Romans 10, 14. Romans 10, 14. Romans 10, 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As is written, how beautiful are them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Now that goes right with Mark 16. Preachers are needed. Preachers are sent by God. And when you read Romans 10, 8 down to 14, you're dealing with a person who is lost. How to be saved with the heart, with the mouth, confessions made unto salvation. So we've got a heart that believes on Jesus Christ. We've got a mouth that's confessing. That mouth is to confess that Jesus saved. And we're to take that mouth and preach to all the people the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Now again, today's subject, can women do it? 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14, 34. Fourteen thirty-four. It says, "Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also says the law." Well, look at the churches. Here is a group of people gathering in the church, bunch of Christians, in the groups. 
in different places, different cities. And it does say, let the women keep silent. But what is the contents of chapter 14? It's tongues. It's the church. It's the congregation of believers. And it's the authority over the church. Now, if we're going out in the world to preach the gospel. The world is not the church. We're not... Very rarely, should I say, will we go out. I cannot go into the world and witness the people of another language. I can't do that. Because the only language I know is English. There, oh, I gotta be careful. Today's churches are unsaved people. Congregation of believers, they don't need to be told how to be saved, they're already saved. Though that may be the message every Sunday morning in many churches. And the authority of the church is the pastor, is the deacons. But when we're talking about a non-church event, going to lost people, 1 Corinthians 14.34 does not apply. You got a congregation, you got a pastor, you got people, you got tongues, you got authority. The authority, the women to keep silent. What are you going to do if you're going out witnessing with your wife or someone, a, a woman from the church, girlfriend, or somebody who, who's taking part in a public ministry, and you're dealing with somebody who now speaks a language you don't speak? And she knows the language respectfully, whatever the language be of the person that is lost that you're dealing with. Would you put put your hand to her mouth and say, be quiet? You're not in the church. You are in the world. You are in the process of telling people about Jesus Christ. And if you can't do it, and the person next to you who happens to be a female can speak a language, what, you're going to turn that guy away from Jesus because, you know, you can't speak? It's not a church. Now, I know where the Bible says where two or three are gathered together and we are the body of Christ and we make up the church, but church is the body of Christ as one particular unit is not church is. You can have in a state 14, 25, 100 Baptist churches. They're not one Baptist church, but they're one body of the bride of Christ, but there are Baptist churches all over the place. And in that Baptist church, in the authority of that church, when you're speaking about tongues in that church, and when there is the congregation of the believers, the women are to be silent. But it's much different when you go in all the world and preach the gospel. Let's take 1 Timothy 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Oh. We got Matthew going all the world and teach. And then baptize. Okay, a woman cannot teach and have the authority over baptism. Baptism, excuse me. But Mark 16 says going all the world and preach the gospel. She is not leading the head of the authority of a church. She's going out telling people about lost souls. But I suffer not a woman to, to teach. Suffer means allow. Nor a sup authority. Go back to 1 Corinthians 14, 34. Over the man. But to be in silence. Now, over the man. What if you got women who, go, who are going out and they're going in public? Let's say they're just going to go to women and talk to women about Jesus. Now, as far as soul winning, with a woman dealing with a man, she's asserting her authority over man. That can be wrong. But again, when you when you got the possibility that here's a person who speaks another language, 
and she knows that language. But and then the problem you get again now if the man who is with that woman, so winning, does not understand what's going on between the two, and there's no interpreter, and then that situation would have to be put to silence. And the woman would not be permitted to speak. When we got the authority over a man, if that man, that that person's going with her, does not understand the conversation, and if, if anything's done in error, he wouldn't know where to stop. But if a woman is dealing with another woman, if she's dealing with a male person that is under her age, that woman can go out and preach and teach other women about Jesus. That woman can go out and deal with teenage, depending on her age, and youngsters. <coughs> but over the man, to be silent. And as we look at references we got here, we cannot take one scripture and pull it out and yank it out and make it a doctrine. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor sub authority over the man but to be silent. And let's go to where we start. Verse 7, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and apostle, I speak the truth in Christ, and lie not, and teacher of Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that the men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands, without wrath and doubting. There's the men. And like men are also. So the women can pray. They can lift up their hands without doubt. That the women... Adorn themselves modest apparel. Oh, we're dealing with dress here. With shamefacedness and sobriety. Not with broiled hair, fixed up hair, gold or pearls or costly rags. So she's to be simple. She's not to attract attention. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So she's have good works. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection to the husband. And to the man of the pulpit. But the most of subjection that wife has is to her husband. Her husband is supposed to teach her, which they don't. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor do you suffer the authority over the man, the man, the man. Well, who's the man? doesn't say the men says the man but to be in silent let's look at the man and not men now first Timothy 3 3 7 3 1 this is a true saying if a man desired the office of bishop he desires a good work. All right, so women preachers. It says if a man desires God, it doesn't say a woman. Uh, verse 8, Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-minded, not giving them much wine, not greedy of filthy liquor, holding the mystery of the faith in pure conscience, and let these also be proved. Then let them use the office of deacon being found blameless. Even so must the wives be great so a deacon is to have wives a man is to have a wife i must say that because today you got women having wives and then he would say okay we'll see i could be the deacon i could be the pastor because i got a wife no you're in violation of sodomy abomination of god but in the church first corinthians 4 1434 there is an authority there is a congregation of believers there is that women have a position it is not to be over the men but in a congregation of other women first timothy 2 12 they can talk to anyone who is under their age 
Sunday school class. But as far as the authority in the church, they're to remain silent. I know this is angering many people out there and will continue anger, but this is the Bible. And we're talking about soul winning. And in Mark 16, we read preach. Matthew 28, we read teach. And Mark 16, I don't know if I said that. Preach, Mark, uh, Matthew 28, teach. Romans 10, preachers are needed. Go back to review what we did. Uh, 14, 1 Corinthians 14. Verse 34. Read it again. 1434. Let your women keep silent in the churches. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. You mean they can't talk at the grocery store? You mean when Rebecca went down to the well and met the other women, she had to keep her mouth shut? So in the churches. And chapter 14 is tongues, churches, congregation of believers, and the authority. 1 Timothy 2.12 again. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to suffer the authority over the man. So if they're soul winning, and the man that's with the woman witnessing and he's talking, she's to remain quiet. But if you're dealing in your soul and you're dealing with other women or you're, you're dealing with children or you're dealing with people that are younger than that woman, she's apt to teach, she's apt to preach. But she is not to assert the authority of that man, she's not to interrupt him. She is not to put her words ahead of his words. But if he gives her liberty to speak with other women, to speak to the people under her age, she has been given liberty by the man to speak and teach and preach. And the moment that he would say, okay, stop, I'm taking over this conversation, I'm taking over this, then she's to remain silent. But there's no restriction by what we read so far. That she's to go so when she can't say a word, she can't say nothing. She there's nothing to say, you know, she's checking out the groceries or, or she's buying the milk at the convenience store, then she's carrying a conversation on with the with the cashier. Oh, I can't say nothing. The Bible says I'm to remain silent. No. Now when it comes to church business, when it comes in the churches, all right. But we're going out in the world. Now let's look at some other things. Acts. The book of Acts. Chapter 18. Acts 18. 18.24. I'll get there eventually. Acts 18.24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria, an elegant man, mighty in scriptures, and came to Ephesus. Apollos, he's a good man. A man that stands out in the Bible. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Uh-oh. He didn't know about the gospel of Jesus Christ. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, who when Aquila and Priscilla, Priscilla being the wife, had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And he turns out right. So here's a husband and wife 
And we're not looking at salvation, but we're looking at a, a false teaching, something that he has not learned yet. And here a husband and wife together expound to Apollos, and boy did he get blessed, and boy did he get really, really by a husband and by a wife. Let's look at Romans 16. Romans 16, verses 2. Romans 16, 2. That you receive her, oh, verse 1, I command unto you, full be our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at St. Crea, that ye receive her in the Lord as becoming saints, that ye assist her in whatsoever business been in succor of many and of myself also a help so here's a woman that's helping in the ministry she's acknowledged by paul greet Priscilla and aquila there they are again the husband and wife team greet them my helpers in christ jesus so already we've seen a husband and wife team what more fellowship, what more good time can a marriage have when a husband and wife together are going out to try to win souls? What a blessing. And then we got one more verse to look here at verse 6. Greet Mary who bestowed much labor on us. So we are seeing women in the ministry working. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. 1 Corinthians 16.9 and the other the other parts of this ministry and the instructions that we're doing here can be found on YouTube or SoundCloud to, to get them. And I advise you to listen and hear and over listen, keep listening, keep going till you get it straight. I encourage you to stay in the public ministry, to stay soul winning. I hope these, these videos and these lessons will help you to go, to help you start, to help you keep going. In 1 Corinthians 16, verse number 19. And the churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that's in their house. You see what God has done with Aquila and Priscilla? They've gone out, they've taken this man together and they, and they instructed him in the right ways of the Lord and in the gospel and they're being works of the church and God has put these two into a church, their church, serving the Lord and doing right. Now when it comes to the church, Aquila has to back off and I mean uh, Priscilla has to back off, the woman has to back off, okay, I'm, you're in charge of this church, you're the deacon, you're the man, and I can't say nothing. I have no authority in the church, but I've got the authority to help you with Apollos. I've got you the authority where Paul recognizes us work in the ministry. But now we got a church, and the Bible says that a woman in the church to silence. She can't be on a deacon board. She can't be a pastor. She can't be on the group that votes for things. She cannot be a sayer, a talker, a trustee of a church. But she can talk to other women. She can teach other women. We'll see that in a moment. But let's go to 2 Timothy 1.5. We'll look at the aspect with other women. I mean, is, is a woman in church to be a mummy? You know, the mums the word mum, 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 No. 1 Timothy 1.5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, the Timothy, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. How many grandmothers are mentioned in the Bible? How many mothers are mentioned in the Bible? And here is two of them with their son Timothy. And you telling me that grandma and mom never said a word ever to Timothy when it came about God and came about Jesus and it came about the Bibles? His father, who was a Greek, did not say anything. It would be the grandmother and the mother. And wouldn't that be a serpent authority over the man?
Now, we don't know what Timothy's father, if he allowed them to do it or he disallowed them to do it. But here they are overstepping the husband and the father of Timothy, teaching him faith and teaching him the scriptures. And they are named. There are two other women that are named in Exodus chapter 1, and they defiled the government when it came to murdering babies. And God said, I like that, and built them a house. And here's a mother and a grandmother who built the house upon Timothy. Again, there's no church, but there's a family. And the Bible says in the family, there's God, there's Jesus, the husband, the wife, the child. And we're not told anything about Timothy's dad, if he allowed this or if he did not allow it. But the mother and the grandmother spoke and brought Timothy up. And he is in the ministry. He has two books written by Paul to him. And he's out there. And Paul even sends him the most carnal church to try to straighten that church out. And the foundation of that young man is his mother and his grandmother. You want to do some soul winning as a woman? You are a mother? Raise your children up in the Lord. Bring them up in the adoration of the Lord. Bring them up to get saved in the Lord. Or maybe take a bunch of other kids on in in church as a Sunday school. Now, there was no Sunday school here. That's, that's fairly new. 2 Timothy 4.19. 2 Timothy 4.19. Salute Priscilla and Aquila, there they are. This husband and wife team are very much mentioned by Paul. So if, if a married woman, as far as soul winning, what would you say, Brother Stiley? I say let her go with her husband. Let the husband take control, but let her do some talking. Let her have an opportunity. It'd be wonderful and great for her if you give her the authority and give her the chance. Wouldn't it be great in that conversation by what she does with the scriptures and the Holy Spirit and that person would bow down and receive Christ as, her, as their Savior? To her credit, which would be going to your credit because you were supposed to teach her. And as husband and wife together, you cold join and a cold part of the rewards. I wouldn't let her take over. Second John one. So when is not just men only, it's not a men only club. Second John one, the elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, not only not I only, but also they that have known the truth. And I rejoice greatly, verse 4, that I found of thy children walking in truth. By who? The mother. The elect lady and her children. The Bible gives the mother great opportunity of soul winning and a ministry, maybe not public, to her children. And then when you get those children out in the public and you raise them right, they're not going to throw themselves down at the, at the toy store because they don't get the cake and the toy they want. They're not going to be the child that, I wish that child would shut up. They're going to look at your children and say, my, they're most behaved. They've been the most behaved kid I've seen in weeks. And then you get the faith. Walking in faith. We saw this with Timothy's mother and grandma. We see this with this unknown woman mentioned in 1 John 1. In Acts 21, 8. Acts 21, 8. So we see a husband and a wife. We see mothers. Acts 21, 8. Acts 21, 8. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist. Oh, there's Philip, the Ethiopian eunuch. He's an evangelist now. He's going around preaching and teaching in churches. 
but it doesn't end there. Which was one of the seven. I mean, excuse me. Philip, the, one, the evangelist, one of the seven, and abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. Uh-oh. Here are women prophesying. What is prophesying? Excuse me, sir. If you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will go to the lake of fire. You will burn in hell. Excuse me, ma'am. Jesus is coming. Man, if you were to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, there's a place called New Jerusalem. Ma'am, sir, the, the faith you put on Jesus Christ, you'll get a new body. You'll have no more sin when we get the glory. In the streets of Jerusalem, there'll be no more tears. That's prophesying. That is telling lost people where they're going to go based upon what they do of Jesus Christ. And here are daughters, females, taking part and prophesying to people. That's interesting. And there are Philip. Philip, the man that went to the Ethiopian eunuch, he is now on the, on the evangelistic circuit. Don't know if he takes his daughters or if they stay, but his daughters are involved with people and telling them, What's going to happen? You can tell lost people what's going to happen. You can tell a Sunday school class as a woman what's going to happen. You just can't do it in a pulpit. You can't do it on a deacon circuit. You can't do it in the authority of the church, but going all the world, that's not the church. And when we do the soul winning, when we do the public ministry, we are dealing with prophecy. We're telling them what's going to happen. Exodus 15. Exodus 15. 1520. 1520. Exodus 15:20. Miriam, that's Moses and Aaron's sister. Aaron the high priest, Moses the preacher, the head of the congregation of Israel, set by God the prophetess. And then here she's in charge of the music of the women, not the man. Look, and took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went after her, no men with timbrels and dances. So Miriam, who's a prophet, is telling yet what's going to happen in the future, gathers a group of people, and they're only females. We'll deal with that in a moment again. She's not telling Moses what to do. She's not telling Aaron what to do. She's not telling any elder what to do. She's not telling any priest what to do. And she's gathered an assembly of women to praise and honor God. And Moses and Aaron and God do not rebuke it. Now when Aaron makes that golden calf and they start dancing and, and getting naked for their small G-O-D, then God gets angry. Then God gets upset. And they're not doing the boogie woogie and they're not doing dances where you rub against the opposite sex. It is the women and it's for the glory of God by the victory that God's just given them. Judges 4 4. Judges 4 4. And Deborah the prophetess. There's another woman prophesying just as much as Philip's daughters. Isaiah 8 3. Isaiah 8 3. And I went unto the prophetess. That's Isaiah's wife. Isaiah's wife was also a prophetess, a female prophet. Or she's carrying the name on of her husband. But Miriam wasn't married. Philip's wives were, uh, Philip's daughters were virgins. They weren't married. There are women in the Bible who will tell people what's going to happen. Luke 2.36. Luke 
Luke 236. Luke 236. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. All right, here's Elizabeth. And Mary, verse 38, Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary enters Elizabeth's house. Chapter 2, verse 46. Mary, my soul does magnify the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. Oh, Mary. He has regarded the lowest state of the handmaiden. And behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. She's telling the future. They call her the Blessed Mary, the Blessed Virgin. For he that is mighty has done to me great things. Holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. There is a prophecy. A future telling. He has showed the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty handed. He has hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. He spake to our fathers through Abraham to see and Mary bold. Here's Mary telling the future. Here's Mary telling. Here's Mary talking to Elizabeth. Her cousin. How's that? Can women talk to women? Titus 2. Be foolish to think a woman can't talk at all. Titus chapter 2, verse 3. Probably some churches out there. The age women likewise, that they be behavioured as become holiness, not false accusers, no gossiping, no murmuring, not given to much wine. Teachers, teachers, what did Matthew say? Wow, look how we start off with the first two verses and look where we are at the end. Teachers of good things. You stay there or keep your place there. Let's go back to Romans chapter 10. Keep your place there. or you know, Romans chapter 10, we'll be back to Titus. Romans 10. Yeah, Romans 10, verse 15. How shall they preach except they be sent? As is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. 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 Titus chapter 2 verse number 4 that they may teach the younger women to be sober to love their husbands and to love their children oh there's a teaching that we saw with Timothy there's a teaching that we saw w with Aquila and Priscilla there's a teaching that we saw women teaching other women how to be women that's died today I'm surprised they're building brand new houses today with kitchens. Most women today don't know what a kitchen is and have no intention of ever finding out what one is. Now, can a woman so win? Can she go out there and tell people about Jesus? Can she go out there and witness and be part of a public ministry? Yes, she can. And she's with a man, he's the authority. She's not the usurper over him. If it's two women going out, go out and tell other women. And, and go out and tell children. And if she's partnered with a husband or another man, and, and she's dealing with a man, as soon as that man that's with her takes over the congregation, she's to back off and let it go. But advise husbands and let your wives be part of the ministry. Let them take part of the fruits. Let them have activeness of 
trying to win someone to the Lord. I wouldn't let anybody browbeat him. I wouldn't let anybody cuss at her. I would at, at that moment that there is harassment, there is trouble against. I take over and say, okay, now you're gonna speak to the man. That's the Bible. You can say, listen, you're not gonna talk to that woman like that. You're gonna speak to the man. That's the Bible. We read that in Timothy. Let her not assert the authority over the man. Well, get in that face who doesn't know how to treat a woman and say, I'm the man, according to the Bible, and now you're going to deal with me. You want to go out with me? But yes, let them go out. Let them to Give them gospel tracts. I'm going to tell you, my wife is great with gospel tracts. My wife at Walmart, I could turn around and she'll be gone. And I, I know she ain't spending money or anything like that. She's out there passing. I'll just tell my daughter, we'll just go meet in the car. She knows where the car is. She'll stop anybody and everybody to give them a gospel track. And my God, oh, honey, you can't do that because you can't talk. Really? Come on. You can see my wife coming out of Walmart with a big old smile from ear to ear. It's not because she's wasting my paycheck, because she's giving the gospel to somebody. And only time she doesn't come, only time she comes out of Walmart with a very sad, ugly-looking face is she forgot to have that track that somebody asked for, like we happened one time. And that upset her. She didn't have the track that somebody asked for. That's a woman that loves the Lord and wants to do right. I let my wife talk. I let her take part, and so should you. But then we got Bible rules. As far as the church, I have seen many churches. I've been in many churches that people say, oh, look, I've been in many churches. No, I've been in many churches where the women in their big mouths have destroyed that church. Okay, I've been part of those women's mouths too, trying to destroy me. Can a woman go and teach or preach? I think we looked at it. Through Priscilla, through Philip's daughters, through Miriam, through Deborah, through Isaiah's wife, through Mary, Titus. Titus says if the women want to talk in church and have a conversation in church, you're to train those other women, the younger women, how to do what needs to be done. So those women will grow up and do what they've done. That's the rule of thumb, but it usually doesn't happen. 